Is the iPad Pro finally pro? Well, today I'm gonna push it to its limits with some unreleased software that was just given to me. We're gonna try some crazy formats, including 8K with the new DaVinci Resolve 18, which Blackmagic is doing something the Apple straight up wouldn't do. Right at the get-go, this is wild to see a full desktop UI professional application with professional level color grading on the iPad. I'm gonna grab my Thunderbolt extremely fast SSD. Let's plug that sucker in, grab this pencil. Let's hit import here, right there. My SSD shows up. I have my Blackmagic projects that were designed on a Mac. Now right away we're getting a LUT error, but if we go to our Files app, there's now DaVinci Resolve folder. I'll select those. Bam, easy, relink these clips here. And there we have it guys, the projects I made years ago, opening up perfectly with my color grade, playing back on this iPad, smooth as butter. As you guys see, we have our cut page right here. Now there's no edit page, but they're gonna be adding more features to it. We also have our color page, and here I have my notes that are here. This is not gonna be an iMovie version of Resolve. I can go in here, I could change uh, my different grades. Now they're also gonna be adding Fairlight and Fusion in the future. And the really cool thing is I can use the Apple Pencil. For example, if I'm gonna be making some adjustments, I can make all controls right here with the precision of that device. I can use my keyboard with that mouse, or I can just go in and I have full control of just anything I want to just by pressing, so the speed is really nice. Now let's make this a little bit harder. I am extremely curious if we can open up Blackmagic RAW files on an iPad, which is not possible with any other application Look at that right here. We have my 4K denoising project. I cannot believe how quick and snappy all of this is. That relinks way faster than on my computer. I don't know if you guys understand how crazy this is. Look at this. I have denoising both temporal and spatial on raw footage on an iPad. Let me hit play. Now this is really tough. Most people don't push it this far. We're running at three, four frames per second for this, which is actually very good. And there's gonna be a free version of Resolve for iPad, but the paid one is gonna be 95 bucks, not 300 on like a computer. So you can pay $95 and get professional tools such as denoising. But then you look over here, we have full camera settings. I can go through and change my color science, update it, go through, change the white balance, change the ISO of the camera. After the fact, I have my full professional color grading tools here, HDR tools, curves if you want, uh, qualifiers, you could do tracking, masking. This is the first time that this float tool is actually coming in handy. Look at this, check out all of the effects. I gotta try out some other footage and look how fast this is. Okay, I have to try stabilization. I'll do this the old fashioned method. Bam, we're analyzing and it is done. Now I did not time that, maybe roughly 30 seconds or so. And now we're playing it back, super smooth. Uh, DaVinci Resolve stabilizer is way better than Final Cuts. And let's take this one step further. I'm gonna import some media here. Bam, SSD, go 32-bit audio from my professional recorder here. No other iPad app that I know of can do this. And I don't know if Resolve will be able to. Let's toss this down here. There you go, guys, recording the audio. You guys see how it's blowing out there? I have a bunch of settings here, equalizer, but I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that volume down. Bam, and now that blown out audio is no longer blown out. Now that is powerful. That's what the iPad should have been doing years ago. Desktop level professional applications. Now, I wanna try something else here. Bam, I just logged into Blackmagic Cloud where you can collaborate with up to 10 people. I have my cloud project that is not even on the SSD and this is some tough footage. To be honest, I don't expect this to work. It doesn't on my Mac Pro. But check this out, using that hover feature, that is actually very convenient where I can skim through here and it's showing it, 
let's go ahead and hit play. This is 4K, 120 frames per second, 10 bit, 422, and it looks like it's playing back perfectly smoothly. Let's go ahead and make it even harder. I'm gonna open this up. It should not be able to play this. This is 4K 120 in real time, not slow down. 120 frames per second. You guys can see right there, I saw a couple drop frames, but my Mac Pro is literally one frame per second. And this right here, look, it automatically connected with my color grade here. And this is just the first version that is being released. The hardest kind of codec, that is crazy. We gotta bust out the 8K. I still can't get over how fast this is right here. All right guys, look at this. We have, let me make this full screen, 8K. We have four streams of 4K in an 8K timeline, which is 8K ProRes. This is 422HQ playing back here. Look how buttery smooth that is right there on this iPad. That is crazy. And to show you guys, go to Inspector here. Right there, 8192 by 4320 ProRes 422HQ. Now, let me go ahead and see, can we export this 8K? Look at that, this is gonna be one massive file. I don't know if this is gonna fit on the SSD. And look at that, we're exporting at 24 frames per second, 26 right there, an 8K project from 8K to 8K. Uh, doing the processing on an iPad and it's rendering at faster than real time. That is very impressive. Now you guys let me know if you want to see how the M2 chip stacks up to the M1 iPad Pro and how much of a difference we have now that we actually have software that can support it. That took 50 seconds to export this one minute AK project with different LUTs applied. So it's not just the ProRes, it is having to process that. And that became a 22 and a half gigabyte file. I'm honestly extremely impressed by how well the first version works, how many effects and features you have built into it, the performance of it, and the fact that Blackmagic RAW works and 32-bit audio, everything else. This is what companies need to be doing. This is what Apple should have done a long time ago. And because of companies like this, the iPad can be more pro when you could just go and do everything off of an external SSD without having to get that crazy storage, copying things over, stuff not working, you have cloud linking, that is just amazing. You guys get let me know your thoughts. Once again, if you guys want to show down between the M1 and M2 iPad Pros, and if that mat performance difference matters, let me know in the comment section. This is Max, and I'll see you in the next video.